What's good everyone, BBK Dragoon back with another Monster Hunter World weapon video. The Switch Axe was the most requested from the last one, and this actually is my favorite weapon in the game right now. Some of the advantages of using the Switch Axe, really long combos that are pretty easy to chain together and allow for versatility in changing from axe to sword mode. Files can be used to add a lot of bonus effects and potential damage to your weapon. Now you can't guard and you're pretty immobile when you're in sword mode, but overall a great weapon for pretty sustained DPS output. The main concept you need to understand with the switch axe is you have two forms. You have axe form, and then you also have the sword form. You move a lot slower while you're in sword form. In sword form, your weapon will deal additional damage on top of the base damage that your weapon type gives you. So I'm currently using the Basil Goose Tree of Switch Axe, which deals blast damage, but I have on top of it here, Power File. Every Switch Axe has one type of file which boosts their capabilities while in sword mode. The power file boosts the raw power of the Switch Axe's sword mode. It's a pretty common one. You have elemental files that can boost the natural elemental status of your Switch Axe. So let's say you deal fire damage. When you're in sword mode, if you have elemental file on that Switch Axe, you're going to be dealing additional elemental damage on top of what the already attack status damage is. There's poison files, paralysis files, exhaust files, which are phenomenal. So you're gonna be wearing the monster out as you're doing damage to him. That's one of the strongest elements of the Switch Axe. While in Axe mode, you have an infinite triangle combo. So you'll see here, it's a little bit slow, but it deals great reach. So if you wanna go after the monster's head, this is a very good combo for doing so. So if you spam circle, you have the wild swing combo, which lets you just basically go infinitely until your stamina runs dry. I found this useful for knocking monsters over. And especially when you're in a situation where you're by their feet and you know you can get away with a handful of these attacks, it's pretty useful. Now, any of your attacks can be transitioned into sword mode by pressing R2. Some of them more fancy animations than others. While in sword mode, you also have basically your triangle combo, which looks like this overhead into the rising, left rising, and then you can just continue doing that. You're kind of getting the, the idea of the picture here, right? With the switch hacks, most of your combo chains carry forth right back into the starting point of the original. And this is what the circle combo looks like while in sword form. I really like the animation for this one. Now you can see I'm dealing a little bit additional damage to the pillar here. Uh, little bits of explosions that are coming off, if you can see here, that is my sword now in amped mode. So do you see how my sword is glowing? And if you look in the upper left hand corner, you'll note that I my icon for the gauge is glowing as well. Essentially, when in sword mode, if you land enough damage, you'll see that go up. Let me discharge real quick to show you guys how it works. So we'll get rid of it here in a second. All right, so watch in the upper left hand corner, the broad outline of the sword icon here. So if I'm doing my attacks, do you see how it's slowly filling up? As long as I'm landing enough uh, hits on the enemy, see, boom, there we go. So we just entered amp state. I might need one more attack. There we go. That's amp state right there. Uh, so it's now glowing and I am dealing in amp state additional file damage. So again, if you have an elemental file and you're going against an enemy who has that weakness, not only are you going to be dealing the elemental damage that the weapon intrinsically has, but you're dealing on top of it additional elemental damage if your file type matches what we're just talking about. Once you've done enough attacks, you'll note that you'll go right back into axe mode. And do you see the little gauge in the upper left hand corner? This starts filling itself back up, indicating that you can go into sword mode. And as you are out of combat, this will refill itself. Even if the weapon is sheathed, this also refills itself while you are attacking. So you can do many attacks in the axe form while you refill that gauge. And essentially when the gauge is up, you wanna go into sword mode and be dealing damage in sword mode. There are some circumstances where using the ax is a better option. You'll note how just using the ax actually does deplete that bar. So you have a limited amount of time that you can use your sword. And as soon as I finish it, it's gonna go right back into the ax mode. Now note if I try and press R2 to go into the sword mode and my gauge is below that white bar, did you see my character had to reload the weapon there? Be very careful about that in combat because that's a long animation that you may get hit during. If you press R2 at any time, you can switch into the sword mode. And then finally, we need to talk about the elemental discharge. 
So elemental discharge, if you press triangle and circle and then spam triangle, lets you deal this really awesome discharge combo. The elemental discharge will cost a lot of your file meter, but it deals quite a bit of damage, which is really nice. So with that said, let's get to some of my favorite combos. Circle, circle into triangle in axe form is a really nice one. So you get two wild swings essentially into a big overhead and you can even hit R2 immediately to get right into uh, sword mode, which is great. One of the main listed combos that actually is very useful is triple triangle, one, two, three into double circle, and then into your elemental discharge. It's a very fast combo chain and it lets you deal quite a bit of damage. The more you play around with the switch axe, the more you're going to learn when to use transitions and when to alternate, because you essentially can alternate between triangle and circle and do lots of different combo types since this weapon chains things together so smoothly. Doing an elemental discharge while in amped state allows you to mount the monster while doing that elemental discharge. What's even cooler is if you aim, you can mount where you want. So let's say you're going after the head. If you aim for that particular spot, you can do the elemental discharge there, and it can be a very useful tool for trying to break off specific pieces of the monster. And absolutely one of my favorite bits is if you're sliding down a slope and you press R2 into your elemental discharge, you can actually transition into an elemental discharge from that aerial attack. So once again, sliding down a surface, R2, into triangle and circle. You can of course do R2 into an overhead slash, but those are pretty much all of the important basics regarding the switch axe. It's not a very complicated weapon once you start using it, but it has major damage output potential. And when building a switch axe, pay extremely close attention to that file type. That's one of the major bonuses of this weapon is in sword mode, you're dealing that additional file type damage, which is fantastic. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please thumbs the video up and subscribe for more. We have Destiny Warframe, more Monster Hunter cooking in the oven. And if I missed anything, I'd love to hear about it in the comments section down below. I know there's a ton of Monster Hunter veterans here, so I'll be thumbing and pinning comments that are useful. So definitely check it out. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll check in with you again very soon.